normally uh, most average babies say their first worry between nine to 15 months. And I was two and a half years old and hadn't, hadn't spoken a word yet. So my parents were suspicious, took me to a doctor. Turns out I was hearing impaired. And from there, uh, it was just a, a big struggle for me as I tried to discover, you know, who I am. You know, what's my identity? Uh, going around elementary school with something called an FM system, you got a big, you know, looks like a space pack on your chest. And so how it can be a barrier in the classroom to learning um, I mean, take the smallest thing. A teacher turns to write something on the board and is talking. I don't know what's being said. I need that lip reading. And so you can think of all the barriers, but I wasn't going to let that get in the way. Why am I going to let that define what I become? I remember one time we were in a Bible study um, at church, and that was when WWJD was such a big thing. What would Jesus do? And we were talking about different things we could use WWJD for. And some, one person said, well, why was Jeff deaf? That same night, um, I went into my room and I just, I threw up that question. I said, God, why? Well, that night I opened up the Bible, John chapter 9. That was my chapter for the night. And I read about the man born blind. And disciples were walking down the road and asked Jesus, why was he born blind? Did he sin? His parents sin? You know, why did this happen? And she said, no, he was born blind so that the worst of God could be shown in this life. And that was the moment that I decided I was going to be a Christian, that, that I realized that my hearing impairment is not an obstacle, it's, it's to be used for glory. From there, I began to see all the ways God was using me. You know, He used me, He had me speak in our state senate to get insurance for hearing aids for kids. He had me, in college, I was doing deaf ministry. Everybody's got some kind of obstacle, whether it's a physical di disability or whether it's some emotional disability, everybody's got something. What happens? Who cares? You know, life isn't about our own comfort. It never was. I partially tore my ACL, and my other knee I fully tore it and had surgery. I've had surgery on my nose because of deviated septum. Uh, my lung has collapsed three times, which I had a chest tube all three times, and then they had to chemically repair my lung. I have had testicular torsion. Um, that was not fun. I have had appendicitis. Uh, I have had a separated bone in my foot. So. Let's, let's run this down. Jesus can say, I got flogged and whipped and put a crown of thorns on my head. I got nailed to a cross. I... He didn't give up. He was victorious. You know, he, he changed the definition of the cross. I want to change the definition of hearing impairment. You know, I've been growing up with hearing impairment my whole life and I've learned how to overcome that. You know, now being a new teacher, just my third year, even how to overcome that in the classroom. And then as of a year and two months ago, I get diagnosed with Usher syndrome and then told that I'm going blind. You know, with my vision normal out here, and now I don't even see my hands till right here. My wife was pregnant when I was diagnosed. And the only thing that was on my mind was I'm not gonna be able to watch my child grow up. But then I remembered what I've been dealing with my whole life. And it only took me a day <laughs> to remember and go back to Christ. Christ defines my life. Christ has the final say. Christ is victorious. You know, just as Jesus spent time with his disciples, I'm trying to spend time with students and take it beyond the classroom and, and invest in them and connect them to church to, so that they can realize that there's something greater, right? Something greater than their own life. And that's Jesus Christ.